Good day. Today we're going to run over some features and some operational information on the Willis 1440 lathe. Uh, this is the way the machine will show up at your facility. Uh, when taking the machine off the skid, you can use the hook right there and also have qualified rigger help you with this placement or qualified people in your own facility. We always recommend at least one meter of space around the entire outside of the machine. That's helpful for part loading and unloading, machine cleaning, maintenance, and it's also a safe way to set the machine up. You'll want to place the machine on the supplied leveling pads, on a, ideally on a solid reinforced concrete slab. And for the highest performance of the machine, you would want to secure the lathe to the floor using the procedures outlined in the manual. As you can see here, those are the areas for the leveling pads and also for bolts to secure to the floor. There's same setup on the front and the rear of the machine. When you receive the machine, all of the ground surfaces will be covered in a grease or possibly a thicker cosmoline type rust preventive. Uh, it is essential that you remove all of this before operating the machine. If it does not come off easily with a rag, uh, we'd recommend WD-40 and steel wool, which works pretty well at breaking down the cosmoline also. For the highest accuracy of the machine, it should be precision leveled. Our method uses two precision levels that we place on the cross slide, on a clean cross slide, and do both the X and the Z axis at the same time in multiple locations up and down the length of the bed until the machine is true. Before operation of the machine, it is very important that you refer to the operation manual to familiarize yourself with all the different handles and levels, handles and levers, excuse me, and also familiarize yourself with the operation of the machine. When hooking up power to the machine, you can see this is the location where you'll bring in your three-phase power. You want to make sure if the machine is wired for 230, that's what's coming in, and same thing with 460. You'll want to have this done by a qualified electrician or qualified people in your facility. This is the electrical control box that is on the machine. And once the machine is hooked up, powers to the machine, this is your main switch right here. We'll turn that on. Now with the main switch on in the back, we'll make sure the e-stop is out. This will show you that you do have power now at the control panel. This is the flood coolant on off. And you can see that's plumbed up to the back of the carriage. It also has a valve up there. And this button here is the jog button, which you would use for changing the spindle speeds right there because you do not change the spindle speeds when the spindle is running. And this is also, the jog button is also very helpful if you need to change any of the levers for the gearbox. The way that Willis sets up their lathe for operation, when you use the apron hand wheel, down is forward. We do understand there are some shops that like up is forward. We can change the wiring on this to make that the way it runs for you. But please contact us if you need to have it running that way because we set up the lays for down being forward. Before operating the machine, you will want to make sure your oil levels are all at good levels. That's for the uh, apron, that looks to be a good level. The threading gearbox, good level. And that's the headstock, that is a good level. Should be roughly halfway up the sight class in all areas. Now for changing the different spindle speeds on the lathe, you have two main gear ranges, high and low, high and low. When you're on the high side, these are your four different RPMs that you can run. Now we're set up for 455. You can see we'll put your jog button. That's your 455. For changing speeds, that went in nicely. Now you'd be on 70. These are all your ranges for low. 70, 140, 335, and 220. Now we're set up on 70. 
and you can see it running at 70. We've increased the RPM speed a little bit, so this will show a little better. We're at 220 now. Down, and to engage the power feed, we lift up on this lever right here. I can see there, there also is an adjustable clutch here, which you can hear clicking, which will prevent overloading. If you want to switch axes here, that'll get you going, and the clutch works the same way for the cross feed also. Remember, this is for feeding only, not used for threading. In fact, the threading lever is locked out when this is engaged. Now we're going to show a quick threading example. Let's use 13 threads per inch, which is right there. Now you want it on W and BD7T. So we need to go W. Just make sure that's in. Oh, see I used the jog there to get that in. WBD7T. So we'll go down to 7 here. T, B it's on, and now D. All right, so it looks like we're in. We may slow it down here a little bit. We'll slow down to 140. All right, now we're in 140, and we're gonna do 13 threads per inch. All right, you may see both the lead screw and the feed rod are turning here. Uh, but we do have it set up for the 13 threads per inch. So we use the threading lever here. And now you're engaged. Here's the tailstock on the machine, which is pretty simple to operate. This moves the spindle in and out. This is a lock for the quill all by itself, spindle right there, tailstock, and this is a lock for the tailstock body. And last but not least, these machines are fitted with a nice pull-out chip tray, which is very easy for cleaning, getting the chips out, and we also do have a foot brake which not only electrically turns the motor off, but it mechanically stops the spindle. We hope this brief demonstration gives you a good idea on the operation of the machine. Feel free to call us with any questions you may have or any comments. Thank you.